Yeah, uh, good afternoon, one and all. Uh, myself, uh, Vignesh, working with uh, EDS Technologies as uh, uh, application specialist from past uh, six and a half years. And uh, today's uh, presentation uh, illustrates the need and uh, use of eyesight uh, for modeling rubber and viscoelasticity. So it's my pleasure to present uh, today's e-seminar on eyesight usage for uh, material calibration and parametric optimization of rubber bush. And I hope uh, it will be of interest and uh, value to you. So here is the agenda wherein I'll be covering a few topics like a small brief intro about uh, uh, Simulia uh, brand and uh, the power of portfolio and what is eyesight, how eyesight uh, will help you the, uh, for product development or uh, eyesight components, what is eyesight or uh, how it is used for visualization and so on. And uh, later we'll be discussing something on uh, how this material calibration tool or the data matching component in eyesight will help rubber industries. And uh, also I'll be taking one uh, case study uh, for uh, parametric optimization of rubber bush, uh, like using eyesight. So what's all about the power of portfolio? Let's have a look uh, back to the beginning of Abacus and the early times of simulation. Abacus has been founded by its uh, three founders in 1978 in Rhode Island, uh, USA. And later Abacus got acquired by Dassault Systems in the year 2005 to become the realistic simulation brand called uh, Simulia. So since then, uh, this Abacus technology has been heavily gone through an evolution process. Also, the simulation brand has evolved. So with time, Dassault Systems have acquired uh, different companies like with amazing technologies and talented people. Like say example, we have eyesight, so which is our main agenda or main topic for today. Along with eyesight, we have Tosca, Efficive, which are uh, uh, like which comes under Simulia brand. So the complete power of portfolio covers the four softwares, Abacus, which we are already aware of, which is a purely a nonlinear analysis software, Eyesight, which is a design optimization software or design process integration software, multidisciplinary optimization software, and so on. So it has got multiple names. And also we have Tosca, which is a non-parameter optimization, which is used for weight optimization and so on. We have FSF, uh, which is purely to, uh, you know, the, to find out the fatigue life of a component. So now let's start uh, about eyesight, uh, which is a process integration and design optimization tool. So to begin with, what is eyesight? Eyesight is essentially a toolkit that helps you to capture the repetitive task and automate them by creating what we call as sim flow in eyesight so let me try to explain this way we have uh, you know uh, each one of us has our own way of working we have many tools that helps us accomplish our day-to-day -day task or work we might be using cat tools like katia solidworks utility tools like calculator excel and word document we might be using some simulation tools like abacus answers nastran so there are couple of tools that we use at work so what eyesight does for you is it brings you the integration and execution of these tools under a common platform it brings to you automation so that these tools can be driven in an automated fashion like passing data from one tool to another without the option of any human intervention uh, so a typical eyesight workflow looks something uh, like this. It looks like a coat hanger uh, process like with your top level task. You know, it sits on the top and uh, it's drive all the tasks under, underneath it. So for example, like a business conversion task follows the, you know, the cost for uh, sequential execution. So this coat hanger process will have a top level driver here and uh, this is the start of the process. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the end of the process. So uh, the red color indicates the end of the process and green color indicates the starting of the process. 
So uh, before we go any further, uh, let us uh, see some examples here, how iSight has uh, helped other customers from different industry verticals in the past when they started using uh, iSight. So we have uh, Textron uh, Corporation, they saw a huge amount of savings in uh, UAV conceptual design process, which is reduced from five days to 10 minutes per iteration. So we can see how much time saving uh, they saw in their project when they started using iSight to automate their uh, process and drive their uh, design studies. So here uh, we have uh, GE, uh, which had a similar goal in their minds in regards to the aircraft engine. They wanted to make it lighter and uh, by using iSight, optimization toolkit, like uh, uh, they were able to make uh, 200 pounds lighter and that amounted to huge uh, cost savings uh, when they started using this iSight. Similarly, uh, GE appliances, they had uh, uh, GE halogen IR lamps. They reduced the cycle time uh, from one year to four weeks. They had uh, different goals here. Uh, they wanted to increase brightness. They want to decrease the energy consumption. And they were able to achieve all that, including the product performance, quality, and reliability by using this uh, eyesight. So these are a couple of examples here that uh, shows you how you can make your product better, faster, cheaper, stronger, lighter. So all these goals that we have in mind will reflect to your product by using eyesight. So uh, we have like a, in eyesight, the Simulation workflows are built by using a components. So these are, uh, you know, uh, there are two categories of components in iSight, which we use it uh, to build our simulation workflow. One is application components, like uh, where we have different CAD softwares and analysis softwares and utility softwares like calculator, Word, Excel, uh, Abacus, Answers, CATIA, SolidWorks, and so on. Similarly, we have process components, uh, the different uh, techniques in order to carry out our parametric optimization. Let's say example, uh, like we have DOI techniques, approximation techniques, optimization techniques, and so on. So again, uh, uh, components, uh, whatever we use uh, to build our uh, uh, the simulation workflow, through the use of those components, uh, we can launch a batch solver calculations, you can launch your visualization tools, you can launch your post-processing tools and routines, and uh, exchange input output parameters between iSight and uh, your simulation tools, check data in and out of data management repositories, and so on. So these are the good examples uh, of how iSight will benefit you if you start using in your uh, simulation or day-to-day -day workflows. iSight can also be used for a very effective data analysis like uh, engineering data analysis, which is all about uh, extracting a non-trivial information out of hundreds and thousands of an data set. So there are a number of tools available in iSight that helps you to understand those correlation when you read hundreds of parameters. So for typical post-processing, we have tools like uh, Pareto chart, we have probability distribution graph, cumulative distribution graph, correlation map that helps you to understand better parameters that are strongly correlated with or weakly correlated to each other. We, we also have uh, this uh, response surfaces that you can visualize in 3D and 2D to see how a response surface for a certain parameters interactions look like. And uh, uh, if you want to look uh, how your Abacus ODB for a particular design looks like, you can invoke viewer from inside iSight. So all are available inside this data analysis tool called iSight. So now let us start our, uh, uh, the main agenda, uh, like how this iSight how the Simulia solutions are used for material calibration.
so first of all uh, like to move further or to before seeing the next slides let's start like what is calibration so calibration has a very specific definition in the engineering community so which is uh, a quite general and may seem like irrelevant in computational mechanics so in the context of your uh, computational mechanics therefore the definition uh, given here is more sensible and applicable so the definition here is based on the context of uh, CFD simulations, okay, uh, but is generally applicable to your computational method. So also related to calibration, uh, like other terms like calibration, other terms like uh, validation, verification, and sensitivity. So which are explained very well. Uh, like uh, you can see here on the screen, like uh, the two links which we have used. So in order to have that idea, uh, what is material calibration? Uh, we have taken this uh, definition. The motivation is uh, to get accurate material parameters, especially for uh, advanced material models. So usually this requires a physical test, which are time consuming and expensive. The more parameters we need to calibrate, the more tests we have to perform. So that's the reason this material calibration tool that is available in Abacus CAE and also in iSight are more helpful for customers who are into rubber manufacturing components or rubber products manufacturing it will help them to save their time and money to get a proper material parameters that are required for this simulation material calibration uh, can be loosely taken as a reverse engineering test data uh, or we can call it as a reverse engineering test uh, uh to the data to be obtained uh, uh, like for um, the coefficient so here the tests are performed on specimens and components okay if the test data is from specimen level test then it is little easier to calibrate your material coefficients so the first option is a, a most basic like using the excel sheet the it's a basic technique uh, like fitting a curve using the least square method and again obviously like uh, it assumes that analytical expression between the measured variable like strain and displacement and independent variable like force and displacement which is known or it can be assumed and the second option is simply using one of the available plugins in cae uh, to calibrate your uh, specific material models such as hyper elasticity and the third option is more general where material coefficients are treated as design variables and are calibrated such that your simulation results from abacus model matches with your available test results and the last option is what is referred to as a data matching and that provides you a powerful way of obtaining material coefficients based on available test data when the corresponding material model is available in a backup. For advanced material behavior, specimen level tests can be quite challenging. So if the test data is based on a component level test, a similar approach as outlined in the like last uh, slide or last point of the earlier slide can be used. So basically this requires creating an abacus model that adequately represents the component test and uh, like initial uh, guess is given to the material coefficients and these are treated as uh, design variables in eyesight and the final set of material coefficients would be the one that would minimize the difference uh, between like the difference between the simulation results and test results so basically this data matching incorporates optimization techniques to achieve the above the uh, above in the sense like uh, whatever the material coefficients which you are looking for that can be achieved very easily using this data matching component so calibration of elastic model modulus so in this case we use a simple example to illustrate data matching assume that uh, we have uh, stress strain data from a uniaxial test 
on a metal specimen and we have to find out its Young's modulus. Of course, uh, so since we know that analytical equation, uh, we can simple, uh, simply like uh, uh, use Excel sheet or simple calculation to do this. However, this illustrates the basic methodology to use Abacus and Eyesight for calibrating any material parameter based on test data. So first, create an Abacus model that adequately uh, represents the test behavior. In this case, uh, since the test behavior is a uh, uniaxial tension, a simple one element model with the uh, right boundary conditions is sufficient. Second, define the material model that adequately represents the material behavior. Uh, so in this case, it's a linear elastic model. And the third one will be an initial estimate of material coefficient. So which is uh, Young's modulus. In this case, like we are using Young's modulus. So the initial value we are using it as a 1678. And the fourth will be running the Abacus analysis for the completion, wherein we have to ensure that stress strain data is available as a history output. And the fifth step is to create an eyesight sim flow that integrates Abacus model, writes the uh, history as a text file and uses this to compare with your test data and the sixth one will be your data matching component to define how to compare the two data that is your simulation data and test data in this case so we would uh, use the difference in area between the two curves and the seventh will be your optimization driver in eyesight to minimize the difference mentioned above so instead of using your physical test data, here we use a test data generated by Young's modulus as thousand. And we can therefore find out how good the methodology is in accurately predicting the material coefficient. So once the eyesight simflow is executed, we could monitor the difference based on the number of iterations. Finally, we arrive at the value of thousand which is what uh, we had used to generate the test data. So eyesight also automatically highlights, uh, which is in green color on the screen, uh, the, which says that the most optimal design based on the constraints and targets we have set. So this is how the eyesight indicates with a green color indication. Now we focus on isotropic hyperelasticity here whose behavior is defined using a strain energy potential u so u is composed of two parts one is deviatoric part that is shear and a volumetric part compression in general the deviatoric part depends on the first and the second invariance of the deviatoric strain tensor so we, we can see that uh, equation on the screen here i1 and i2 are the first and second invariance of deviatoric strain uh, strain tensor and the simplest way to represent the behavior would be to use a polynomial uh, model uh, that is like with the muni reveling being the model n equal to one so that is your uh, uh, muni reveling so some studies uh, show uh, showed that uh, i2 uh, this I2, the second invariant of deviatoric strain tensor, does not impact the overall material behavior significantly. If we like a uh, like a remove dependence on I I2, we get reduced polynomial models such as neo hookian neo hookian n equal to one and your model n equal to three. So octane model on the other hand. Uh, represents the material behavior uh, through your uh, principal stretch ratios and also allows for uh, non-integer powers. So uh, like uh, here we are not discussing in detail. So for more details, if you want to understand in detail about these material models, uh, I request you to please refer your Abacus documentation, uh, which will give you full information about these material models. One way of calibrating hyperelasticity is uh, to use Excel as discussed earlier. In this case, we use Excel to calibrate for C10 of the Neo-Hookian model. 
So this is our new Hookean model equation and we are calibrating the coefficient of this C10. So this is, a, uh, this is how we use the Excel sheet and we try to calculate the C10 value or the coefficient value of a new Hookean. Another easier option to use evaluate or the evaluate option that is available in Abacus CAE. So input the available test data, click on evaluate from the material manager, select the range of test data that needs to be used for the evaluation. So this is the second way to calculate your coefficients of your material models based on the test data that you are using it as an input for the simulation. Select the strain energy potentials that you would like to compare. Once you click OK, Abacus CAE would show you the stability information. It is nothing but range of strains for each deformation mode that the model will be stable and the corresponding coefficient. Also, you could uh, see how closely the strain energy potential matches your uh, test data and you, and you can choose one model appropriately so for example like uh, if you have input uh, like only unilateral tension data but expect like a compression and shear deformation then it is important to ensure that uh, selected strain energy potential uh, predicts a realistic response in compression and shear and so on so again uh, uh, the user should uh, take some precautions uh, while selecting the material model because uh, uh, to have a very good result, yes, material data will play a vital role. Another important thing uh, when it comes to polymers or the rubber is your Mullins effect. So hyperelastic material behavior is quite complicated and as represented by the test data, you can see on the screen that is shown on the right. So we can see stress, softening, hysteresis, progressive damage and permanent set. Mullins effect uh, represents the stress softening part under quasi static cyclic loading. Given that, like the complexity is uh, involved in a backers, like we assume that Mullins effect does not include permanent set and hysteresis. So, that is like an image on the center. So, this is how, like, when we want to include a Mullins effect in a backers, we assume that. Uh, it does not include any permanent set and it does not include any hysteresis. So with these uh, assumptions, Mullins effect is basically incorporated by introducing a damage variable into the strain energy potential, which like we have discussed earlier. And the damage variable is represented by the equation shown here with uh, R, M and beta uh, being the inputs to uh, backers for Mullins effect. So again, for more information about uh, Mullins effect, please refer to your uh, Abacus documentation. The simplest way to obtain these parameters is to simply run one element Abacus analysis. As mentioned above, like we have taken one element. Okay, so input the available test data for Mullins effect, run the analysis and calibrated parameters would be written to your that file so we have seen using excel and abacus cae for uh, calibrating hyperelasticity let us use uh, the abacus and eyesight in this example like uh, here in this example we are testing a uniaxial compression which should ideally be free from friction uh, friction causes lateral constraints and the resulting shear stress Corrupts, corrupts the compressive behavior. So thereby, it will give you a different stress strain curve. So if there are friction effects in the test, then the bad data can be used in Abacus CAE to get an initial estimate of the coefficients. And using them in an Abacus model for compression, uh, we can get better estimate of. Uh, uh, or we can uh, like estimate better uh, coefficients through data matching in eyesight. So in this case, where we are using both abacus and eyesight, so we are using a U model. The data matching done through an abacus model that provides uh, like uh, uh, 
like uh, that provides the closer data uh, that is obtained from a free friction test. Also, this can be used to calibrate for friction coefficient, which would uh, match the bad test data, and then set the friction to zero in the abacus model to find out the real stress strain response. The most powerful use of uh, data matching is what is illustrated here. So calibrating for material coefficients based on component tests, while uh, specimen level tests are meant to represent a uh, simple deformation modes, uh, which can be uh, directly used to predict your material parameters. Uh, they are also like sometimes expensive and time consuming and also like component level tests are uh, routinely performed to assess your uh, uh, stiffness characteristics in terms of static. In this workflow, we look at both static and dynamic stiffness characterization. So the basic methodology remains the same. Use abacus to replicate the test scenario. Use eyesight to calibrate material parameters by minimizing the difference between the test data and simulation results. Bushing information obtained from test is uh, given in the table. So the values are not shown uh, due to some confidentiality. So we will use an uh, initial guess for material parameters, Muni Revlin and uh, Prony series. So using a uh, data matching component to match the static stiffness and dynamic stiffness. So in this case, we use two different eyesight sim flows, one for static and one for dynamic. They can be combined to automate the entire procedure. So more uh, uh, like uh, kind of uh, simulations can be done either alone or you know the combining and so on so once the prony series coefficients are obtained the storage and loss moduli can also be calculated so basically this is to validate the model with the test data results available in the ecdm uh, like uh, we have one paper one paper uh, that is available uh, with respect to e epdm rubber so using that, uh, we can get some test data for EPDM rubber. So now uh, let us discuss about your uh, parametric optimization of rubber bush using iFight. So before moving on, like why uh, we have to do a simulations on a rubber bush or why uh, for rubber bush? So bushing is nothing but it's a flex a flexonics. That is what uh, the term or the terminology used in automotive uh, industry. So bushing is a flexonics used in vehicle suspension design, uh, even under engine as an engine dampers or uh, your uh, uh, transmission dampers or and so on. So it is being used in various places in the uh, vehicle so it must meet the needs of vehicle noise and vibration reduction and obtain a expected uh, suspension compliance so bushing design could affect the vehicle noise and vibration riding response and comfort so bushing carries most commonly the translation loads but can also carry your rotational loads as well as in like you know in some cases since a bushing may sometimes be designed not aligned with the vertical or horizontal directions. So a bushing has to survive multi axial variable amplitude load history and meet a, a warranted life. So considering all these things to design a proper bush with proper stiffness so that that bush can handle a the four load cases generally we consider on a bush that is radial load, axial load, conical load, and torsional load. So we have to come up with a proper design of a bush with proper stiffness and so on. So that is where the eyesight comes into picture. So it's a common uh, workflows uh, that are uh, developed or that are available or that you can develop. See, for example, uh, since our main motto for today is on eyesight, you're not talking much about your Tosca sheep optimization and FSA rubber. So we have a dedicated add-on module in FSA uh, in FSA 
wherein you can use FSF rubber to estimate the life of a rubber component. And in Tosca, we have a shape optimization module which is used to reduce the localized stresses on the component and increase the durability. So using those uh, two softwares, we can also develop something like a cycle like this here, which is shown on the screen. So Abacus standard is well suited for simulating your loaded pushing. So it's advanced material and contact will allow uh, such analysis to be accurate and efficient. Okay, so Tosca shape optimization can be used to fine tune the external surface uh, shapes of the bushing to achieve a longer fatigue life. And the shape optimization could slightly reduce the previously achieved stiffness response. So this can be corrected by elevating the target stiffness responses in a, a parametric and a shape optimization and so on. So this is how the workflow uh, that goes on in eyesight. Uh, for a clear understanding, we have taken or uh, we'll be showing you the step-by-step -step procedure of uh, how to do a parametric optimization of a rubber bush to achieve our stiffness for all four, considering all four load cases together. So first, uh, initially, like uh, uh, we have uh, created a sketch from sketch, we have captured the parameters that need to be modified or that need to be optimized. So here we can see uh, we have considered the whole width, whole location, whole span, and so on. So these are the uh, few parameters that we have uh, considered to reach our target uh, stiffness response. And this is a step-by-step -step procedure uh, that we need to follow for in eyesight to achieve our uh, stiffness. So first in step one, like it's a three step process. So we'll be talking about the step one. So here we have done one DOE study for one load case. That is example your actual load case. So we have done a actual uh, load case DOE study. We are in the first switching operation and then actual load is acting. So likewise, we have created a four uh, device studies for individual load cases considering your switching operation and then from eyesight runtime gateway we have exported a text files means from your design of experiment studies for each individual load cases we have exported one text file and that by using that text file we have done a approximation study with optimization so in each approximation study, like uh, we have included the text files that are exported from your device study and we have used as an input here. And finally, we have achieved a optimized result. So here in eyesight, the best suitable design will be highlighted in a green color. So here eyesight has given us with a suitable parameters wherein we can achieve a proper stiffness for all load four cases and so on. So this is uh, this is what we achieved in the end. So to summarize uh, this presentation, like uh, eyesight is very much helpful to reduce your design time where you can automate your design process and get a proper design and improve your product performance and quality by exploring your design space so that you can find the best design and so on. Apart from that, look, you can also understand your design better by doing this DOE kind of studies or optimization study or approximation study and so on, so that you can make a best design uh, decisions uh, to achieve the optimum overall design to meet the needs of your end customer. Thank you, thank you very much.